Hello and welcome to another episode of Trep Tech Podcast. I am your co-host, Scott Doucette, and I am here with the magnificent, the beautiful, the monolithic Ariel Renal to talk about what she does in her business. Is she the tech angel? Is she the accountability bulldog? Does she just perform miracles where sales funnels and integration is concerned? Nobody really knows. Or do we now? This is not the first time we've sat down and done this show. This show actually has history. A few years ago, we recorded the first iteration of Trep Tech Podcast, and Ariel could not articulate exactly what it is she could do because she was such a skilled generalist that she could do a little bit of everything. And I feel like over the past three years, we've grown a lot as people. We've done a lot of crazy things. And I think Ariel knows exactly what she does today. So that is what today is going to be all about. We're going to get in. We're going to talk to the host of the show, Ariel, and figure out who she is, what she does, how she helps people, who she helps, and why the hell am I on this show anyway? All right. Without any further hesitation, I would like to welcome to the stage, Miss Ariel, Mrs. Ariel Renal. Hey. <laughs> wow. Hey. It's been forever. Yes, it has. <laughs> and that intro, okay, I so wasn't expecting that. That was so professional and well thought out. And I'm just like, oh, okay, I have <laughs> your I, I just, on high. <laughs> I was just, I was just winging it. <laughs> <laughs> that was like you wrote it out and everything. <laughs> nah, I, I couldn't be bothered. I just turned on the mic and I was like, what do I want to say about Ariel today? <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'll let you lead you i'll let you ask me whatever questions pick my brain yeah um, yeah i'm excited so i guess i the one thing i'd like to start with is since you and i sat down last I, i'm I'm gonna be nosy and kind of a friend right now but like since mm -hmm. you and i sat down last to record this show which was man i don't even remember i want to say it was at least three years ago that we published this show at least uh yeah mm -hmm things have changed. You know, a lot of things have changed. And like you got married. And I did to an amazing man. Yeah, I was gonna say G dubs is, is the bomb, which is awesome. Like you, you're treated well, you're, you're in a happy place. And, and I think that's I me mean, not that you were ever miserable. I'm not saying that like you were always pretty, pretty awesome. But like, no, I've been miserable <laughs> when it came to relationships. <laughs> I suppose yeah, a full disclosure, right? Haven't we? Haven't we all? You know, for me, that's just it depends on the day. <laughs> 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 but like, we have grown as entrepreneurs. We have grown in a lot of ways. You know, I've had kids, which has have brought me a whole different side of life. I didn't expect to, you know, to be doing right now. And Congratulations! So, holy shit, Ariel, we. No, three years is, is an understatement. Scotland wasn't born yet when we turned off this show. Scotland wasn't born for a year or two yet. So we've been missing for at least four and a half, five years minimum. Wow, time flies. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, isn't that an eye opener? So anyway, for anyone who doesn't know who we are, <laughs> welcome to who we are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have kids, Ariel's married. That's it. That's us <laughs> in a nutshell. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, a lot has changed. And so I'm curious as to what exactly is it you are geeking out on now? What is it you're passionate about helping people with? Because it seems like it's a lot of the same things that you used to do where integration, making systems talk to each other, making sure things flow smoothly, setting up things like landing pages and sales pages and integrating podcasts into websites and like all the annoying stuff no one else wants to touch. It seems like you've condensed it all into this amazing little ball. And I just kind of want you to talk about it from your point of view a little bit. Oh, I mean, no one else likes it. They hate it, but I love it. It lights me up. And the quick way that I explain it is anything tech related when it comes to your online business, whether it's automations, funnels, integrations, I got you. <laughs> that is <laughs> one much. thing I can take off your plate and I got you. So since we last, well, I don't even remember how long ago it is. We've established that it's been at least like four years. Yeah, minimum Probably four or five. five. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of my favorite offers that I have, and I know, you know, previously on the podcast, we talked about 
how being super excited about an offer also affects, you know, how well the offer is received by the public because of that energy and stuff. Yeah. And so I started Tech Concierge October of 2021, I believe it was. Nice, nice. So it's got some tenure. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, I, I don't know why. I can't remember how long it's been, but- Because you just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to mention that. I was going to act like I've been awake, you know. <laughs> but you call me before 10 o'clock a.m. my time. So, you know, I don't wake up before 10 <laughs> The most <laughs> entrepreneurial thing you've you've said this week. <laughs> you caught me before 10. Sorry, I'm still wiping the sleep out of my eyes. It sucks that you work at seven. <laughs> my family dynamic is a little different. <laughs> I don't have to worry about young kids and everything. But um, yeah, the tech concierge has been so amazing. It's so fulfilling. And like I said, I do everything from building funnels, building websites, to helping people automate like email automation and just automate their business so that they're not worried about all that tedious stuff yeah that comes about when dealing with online business and not only just tech so i've gotten more clarity on tech i know that's my sweet spot i could do it in my sleep i literally do do it in my sleep but also since we've last, you know, been on air, I've become, I've got my credentials as an online business manager. And right now I'm actually so excited because I'm going through a certification for a certified master persuader. And I know persuader, that word may t- turn some people off, but it is just understanding the psychology of sales and marketing. And Anybody who knows me knows I geek out on all things psychology. So I am so excited to finish that, get that certification and, you know, help my clients the best that I can. So my offers will be changing, upgrading, you know, all that good kind of stuff, a little restructuring. But one thing I do not want to do is get rid of tech concierge because that's that's my heart. It sounds like it. And it's interesting because, you know, again, revisiting the past, like you were a kind of person who I feel like it's because you were still looking for exactly the way to package it. But you had a new offer every couple of weeks when we used to do business. And I personally, as as a very simple minded person, (laughs) had a hard time keeping up with like, okay, we got this offer, this bonus, this throw in, this ad, this value ad, this ladder stack. And I was like, wow, I don't know what's going on anymore. I'm confused. And it sounds, yeah, yeah. Cause I, I, Ariel, I have had one offer for since 2016. (laughs) Well, you know what? I, (laughs) I blame you because I used you as my sounding board. (laughs) Uh, Full responsibility. You have a lot of good ideas, tons of them. And how can I say no to it? If like, cause it's, it's not like you bring things to me and I'm like, no, that's stupid. You bring things to me and I'm like, no, that's an incredible idea. That is a viable business. And you're like, I'm going to add that too. And I'm like, however, focus is important. (laughs) (laughs) So like, but what I love is that it sounds like you found the tech concierge. You dialed into the one thing that you can sell consistently. People see the value in it. It's not like they're looking at you and asking like, how does this help me? It sounds like they come to you and they're like, wow, I hate all of that. How much do you cost? Really? That's it? Okay, I'm in. Yeah. It sounds like that's your sales process now. It, it pretty much is. Nice. And with the tech concierge, it's still all of the things. <laughs> and, you know, people can, of course, book me one-on-one for like VIP days. Mm-hmm. But the tech concierge is almost all-encompassing. At least that is where we start. And then sometimes we branch out if someone needs like business management services our coaching slash consulting, you know, different things like that. The package is basically built from there, but the tech concierge is like, let me just ask. And for clarity's sake, like, is this basically like someone pays you on a monthly retainer and you come in and provide like the support they require? 
Yes, it's a monthly flat rate, which you cannot beat. And it's unlimited requests for tech. And I have different tiers. So for tech, graphics, copywriting, that kind of stuff. And depending on what, how much support you need, you can choose the right tier. And yeah, you, you get all the support you need. Beautiful. And I'm just going to sneak it in there that Ariel has actually partnered with us, Podcast Bay Productions and Scott Doucette Business Solutions to kind of fill in some of the gaps that she doesn't offer because she doesn't want to offer everything anymore, which is incredible. It, it leaves a hole for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it still looks like I offer everything. <laughs> I've learned how to delegate and disappear no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and out delegate and outsource. So, you know, usually people say done for you services are not scalable or it's a scalability problem there. We struggle but, with it. I'll be real with you. We do struggle with it on our side because it really depends on the quality of our personnel and how available they are. So exactly. I, I 100% feel you, but it seems like you have a solution. <laughs> yeah. I have a secret like little model <laughs> that I follow. And so I'm able to support, you know, more and more clientele and offer the different services so that people, because I know one of the frustrating things is people trying to find quality service providers, someone that they can trust, someone that speaks the, you know, the language of the service, like podcasting language or graphics language, you know, because putting in work orders or tickets can get frustrating if the designer or service provider doesn't understand what you're saying, if there's a communication, you know, gap there. So I've seen it live action. I've gotten the chance to sit down and finally work on a launch with you recently for like, Uh we handled the podcast element of it, but we got to work alongside you while you set up all of the websites and integrations and all of that and, and the design basically. And you know, it was incredible to watch, to watch everything develop because, you know, I'm spying, I'm nosy. <laughs> so I, would, I would click all the supposedly broken links and go snooping. But yeah, like all of these, all of these things, watching them develop, watching the mistakes happen, watching where the, the communication got lost. That for me just strengthened the fact that I would not want to be part of that back and forth banter. And I would hire you just to do that between the designer and I, because honestly, I don't have time for that. You know, I don't have time to be like, no, 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 you made a mistake. Try this instead. Like, I'm busy. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Most people don't have time. They don't have time. They don't have the desire. They don't have the wherewithal. People have families. Um, I don't speak designer lingo. I draw my my ideas out on the paint program, hand it to a designer, and they're like, "Uh, I'll try. (laughs) Exactly. And you remember how you were clowning me about, you know, having all these different ideas. I remember we having this conversation about me. And like I said, you were clowning me. But then I realized on the flip side of strength. So it's pretty much like when I talk to people, I can envision their whole entire brand. Yes, you can. (laughs) So I take that strength and that understanding and understanding what the client wants and how they want to market their brand and their what their messaging is what their vision and mission is and I use that information to manage the projects when it comes to tech and graphics and all of that stuff so I pretty much act as a project manager but I mean I do still get into the weeds because I liaison with the clients and manage who manage the work yeah. Um, you're basically so, at the end of the day, your quality and execution is everything here. And is it good? Right. Right. That's basically my, my position within podcast Bay at this point, you know, is uh, my writer does the writing. My editor does the editing. I do the production cause I'm the producer. Like I, I, so for me, it's all just, is it good? Could I turn this into a client? Feel good about it. Excellent. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's a lot of quality assurance and, and doing the finer, like I'd say like the top 20% of the details, you know? Yes. Yes. Which is very important. Man, and it it's really, exhausting. 
much. <laughs> but see, like I said, that's I love the behind the scenes. That's something else I realized. I realized that I love the behind the scenes and I absolutely love the business side of business. So usually people just want to coach and they tell me they hate the business, quote unquote, hate the business side of business. But that is what I absolutely love. So knowing that I can support people and make their entrepreneurial journey smoother and easier and help with that success and all of that stuff, that is so fulfilling to me. Mm -hmm. I love that that's the purpose behind it is just like, I want to make your life easier because anytime that you get in and you're, you've got that service mind, but you also know your worth and your value and you can clearly articulate what it is you do, you're in the money. And again, like I'm watching you. And so for anyone listening, setting up their business, you know, come from a place of service, be able to articulate what you do and who you help, make sure they know who they are. You know, one thing yeah. I've always known about Ariel is like Ariel can, it's, it's funny because I used to clown her because no word of a lie. Someone could walk up to Ariel and say, you know, I really love cooking. And Ariel's already <laughs> watching their fully produced cooking show in her head. Like now I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're really visionary and a lot of people, they lack that visionary component. They can't see the forest from the trees and you get to do both. You get to see what the whole forest is going to look like. And then you can go down into each individual tree and make up what the forest is made of. And I think that's really cool. A lot of people lack that, the micro and the macro, you know, they, they usually are really good at one and lack the other, but you kind of compartmentalize and play both sides. And it's really neat to watch. Well, I contribute that to Uncle Sam because being in the military, I had to learn and, you know, a leader in the military, learning who has what strengths and how to leverage that, how to delegate and, you know, how to support my soldiers. Say, for instance, so like I had, when I was in the military, I did communication security I did pretty much IT stuff, but I did not do anything when it came to radios. I just radios and the actual military equipment. If it was like civilian equipment that we use in the military, I was great at it. But the actual military equipment, I know I had soldiers that could knock that stuff out like, like nothing. So if we had like a mission or something that had to do with a radio, I said, hey, so-and-so, can you set up this radio and everything? And then if they had to work, oh, well, there's no, not really overtime in the military, but if, you know. <laughs> not at Podcast Bay either. Not, not in yours either. <laughs> right. It's so, all work. But, it's all time. <laughs> <laughs> but like if they ask for a comp day, it's like, yeah, no problem because you did the work here. But just knowing how to delegate, who to delegate to, knowing your service providers, I learned that firsthand in the military. That really, really helped me a lot. So can I ask you like- I hope uh, that makes sense. It, no, it does. It very much does. And like as a civilian, like I'm very envious of veterans, at least the ones who, especially the ones who are put into leadership roles. I mean, like, my stepfather was in the service for 27 years. And for the most wow. part, like he went up to sergeant in, in the Canadian Armed Forces, which is like as high as you can go before becoming an officer, because he didn't want to carry a clipboard. He really liked kicking in the doors. And he, because he was infantry. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, he's grunt. He's grunt. <laughs> and so basically, like he told me that, you know, he loved being in charge of people, but he loved being in the field and he loved being on the ground and he loved being like, on the team that was going to do the dirt, but he really loved being able to decide who's getting into what dirt on his team. And he uh -huh. used to talk a lot about what you're talking about, knowing people's strengths, knowing people's weaknesses. And the one thing I'll say about that man, and I've seen it with you too, for me, if I have a lot of communication to do and a lot of details to take care of and a lot of things that need like dotting and crossing, I can get into a state of overwhelm and then paralysis very easily. And then I have to work through everything in like basically like five minute chunks until it's done. You know, like do a little bit, do a little bit, do a little bit, do a little bit until I'm through it. And it feels like eating nothing but a big plate of potatoes. You know how boring that gets? Yeah. Like you get like imagine sitting down to an entire bowl of carrots and that's your day. 
<laughs> you're, you're gonna be bored three carrots in and you're gonna be like oh shit i still have a whole bowl of this that's how i feel right and so when you and he get in there with your your military leadership brains you guys can take an inventory of what you have who you have as far as resources and human resources are available what their strengths and weaknesses are delegate out task lists delegate out objectives that lend themselves to the main mission set up all of the basically the timelines and projections how long it's going to take who's going to be done what when where why you know what details are going in what part of components written what component is you know active what component is theoretical what component is and you're you're literally doing all of this mapping out in a matter of seconds and i'm going you really fucking like carrots <laughs> You know, something that would take me an eternity to do, you already have deployed the manpower and resource to do it in the time it would take me to figure out if I want to do it today or not. And so I've always found that to be very enviable and, and I'm, I'm very jealous of it because I feel like the military organizational structure creates that ability to create structure, you know, and to manage project and things like that. So I think that's incredible. But you know what? I, you say that. And I'm over here like, wow, that is what I do. But I'm <laughs> so, <laughs> when you break it down the way that you did, but I am so laid back and easygoing. That's what I was asking. Like, how do you not set your own hair on fire? <laughs> <laughs> because I know. Like, it's a weave, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a weave. <laughs> how did I know you were going to bring that up? Um... <laughs> Just knowing like, okay, certain things, I'm like, I do not do tedious stuff, but I know that there's someone out there that loves and geeks out on whatever it is that I hate. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, I don't do this, but you do. Here you go. For instance, editors, when it comes to like books and, and copywriting or just anything written, the editors... I could not do that. It's too tedious. So, but I know editors who are amazing at it. So it's like, hey, here you go. <laughs> do your thing. With yeah. podcasting, I mean, I've had I've had experience in audio and video editing, but it's so freaking tedious to me. I just shut that part of my brain off and I'm like, here, Scott. Here you go. <laughs> and then I shut that part of my brain off and go, here, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> so I do what you do, just to, you know, it just takes me longer. <laughs> but yeah, so just, I mean. But it's it's cool to know that you have amassed the the personnel and the, the quality of talent available to, because I've seen what you guys are pulling off. You know, the podcast we launched with you, I saw the visuals and my jaw hit the floor. You really make me sound so organized and like I have it all together. Oh, no, I know you're screaming on the back end somewhere. Everyone does. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's, it's amazing. I mean, that's a whole episode in itself. Like, you know, the real behind the scenes. The, the um, silent struggles. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trust me, that that's going to be a good one. It's, bring your tissues. <laughs> <laughs> Need a good cry. But no, it's, it's incredible to see. And like, it's nice to see the tech concierge bringing in, you know, the clientele and also you being able to, to provide like a case in point for yourself. Like, this is what I do. These are the people you can talk to about it. But my question is who needs the tech concierge? Like who exactly are, is hiring you? What are their problems? Like, why are they, what are they slamming their head up against that? They're like, Ariel, just, just fucking do this, please. Online business owners who hate tech or don't have time to deal with it. What's the thing you've been asked to do the most? What component have you been asked to do the most? Connecting the different software to make it work and talk to each other. So like and Stripe to WordPress to Zapier to this to that to whatever it is you're doing? Right. Yeah. And automating it, creating automations so that things run smoothly and you're not having to do, <laughs> I want to say like, you're not having to do grunt work, <laughs> but you're not having to, you know, do tedious things. Stuff just automatically works. Beautiful. So it frees up a ton of time. Those two are the biggest things I help with. And of course, troubleshooting. 
sorry, if I'm just going to cut in really it. quick. Sorry, go I'm ahead, just going to cut ahead. in really quick here and just say like, I remember when you were helping me, a lot of what it was, was like, I was really good at creating the component, but mm -hmm. then the, com the component just sat there being a component. You were the one who interfaced it to the next piece and the next piece and the next piece and turned my components into a process. Yes. So that's yeah. the part that you really like, that's the part you get asked to do the most, you'd say? Yeah. So like somebody would come to me and they say, okay, this is my vision. This is what I want to make happen. This is how I want it to look. And then I figure out the behind the scenes logistics for it. So what software do you need? How to connect it to one another and how to automate everything so that your business can run even on days that you don't feel like it or when you want to take vacation or when shit hits the fan with your family, which happens a lot. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I do. And then if something breaks, of course, I'm there. If there's something specific that you want done, but you can't figure out how to make the software work the way you want it to work, I'm there. It's like, just send it my way. Don't even worry about it. I'll figure it out. So for the electricians in the audience, I'm going to do a little bit of a simile here basically or a metaphor you provide the fixtures and ariel will do the wiring <laughs> well damn <laughs> so see this is why i need you because i can say something and it'll take me like a million words to say and then you come in and you have like two words to sum it all up i don't like to do a lot of talking so if i can do it as concisely as possible i'm gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> and weird that I became a podcast host, isn't it? Right, right. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I draw, I guess I, I have a, a, an ability to just simplify things because I have a simple mind. And, and that yeah. is, people are going to notice that in our podcast is that you have a very active, social, energetic, exuberant, like I love life and I'm here for it kind of energy, which I vibe off of. Like you pull me out of whatever muck that I'm in. But I very much have a like head down, grind, serious, nose to the grindstone, get her done. Let's charge forward and do this kind of attitude. And I, you know, and, and I, I feel like it comes together into a really nice combo, you know, that allows us to kind of appeal to more people, but also like tackle tasks that the other has no interest in doing at all. Yeah, because you ground me. So like if I have a million ideas, a million words... <laughs> <laughs> you know, head in the clouds, you're like, okay, Ariel, let's simplify. Let's break this down. And it's like, okay, you know, it, you, because we're so different, it helps balance, but we have enough similarities that we get along amazingly well. I mean, like you're one of my best friends and we've never met in person. But you're hoping to tell. change that. I'm hoping to change that. Honestly, I'd love, yes, to, love yes. to either have you up here, although it's very cold. <laughs> I would rather go to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I told G Dub that we're gonna have to go to Canada to visit you. So to yes, <laughs> yes, like I, it's it, absolutely. If you want to meet the kids, you're gonna have to come to me because I'm not bringing those three kids across the border. Like are you, I know. <laughs> Like um, they are beautiful and I am not, they're going to think I'm kidnapping someone else's kids. <laughs> but we definitely need to talk about how the power of like social media and the internet and, you know, building those connections and networking because that yes. has been pivotal in my business. hundred percent, hundred percent. And we should do an entire episode on that. Just how we use social media. Cause I, I use mine very differently than you use yours. And, and weirdly enough, we're both getting results from the same place. So exactly. <laughs> that's kind of interesting. I'd love to break down those strategies at some point. So my question for you is, you know, we're, we're coming to the, the end of this episode, I would assume, because, you know, we, we've gotten yeah. who you are, you know, your military <laughs> background. We, we know you're married to G dubs, the best man alive. Uh, we know you sleep till 10, uh, which is important for everyone out there. Don't call Ariel before 10 or don't expect actually, a reply to your messenger before 10. Actually, it's a little bit later than that, but we'll stick with 10. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, 
to be determined. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we, we know about you. We know about the tech concierge. You pay a retainer. You come in and take all of the headache off of people. We know that you've got an, you know, an adept mind for your visionary, but you're also got a project manager's mind where you can break things down and deploy the right personnel to get the job done. We know that you have a, an eternal love for me as your friend, and I feel like that's important. And then, so Ariel, do you have any goals for like, we're on episode one of this podcast. Okay. By the time uh-huh. we get to episode 26 of this podcast, one year from today, what do you hope that you've accomplished as a result of sitting here on the mic? Oh, helping others reach their goals. How many that others? Sounds so vague. <laughs> that sounds so vague. You're playing safe. That's a good purpose, though. That is important. So you hope you've accomplished that someone gained insight, knowledge, and got help from listening to this show, basically. Yes. That's great. That's good. Wait, so are you asking me just from the show itself? I mean, what do you want to have, have had accomplished a year from now as, you know, as a business owner, as, as for this show, like you can take it any direction that feels natural to take it. I just, it, for me, it's a way to get insight into, into what we're up to, but also hold you accountable so that at episode 15, I can be like, Hey, how yes, close definitely. are you? <laughs> definitely. We got nine more episodes. Where are you at? <laughs> you know, from my point of view, because I'm, I'm laid back and stuff and I'm, I'm the silly one in this relationship just to release some of the stress that comes with entrepreneurship so people have an opportunity to laugh and you know take a break from the hustle and bustle and also to realize that they're not alone so I know we'll touch on some of the things that we hate we probably have some bitch and gripe sessions (laughs) Um, (laughs) absolutely a party's not a party until we've done that right but then it sheds light onto the things that actually go on and the emotional roller coasters, the ebbs and flows of entrepreneurship, just letting people that th- know that they're not alone when it comes to that and that whatever their desires, dreams, mission, vision, goals, whatever you want to say, the aspirations, whatever they are, they can make it happen. Just find the right support system and that has set you up for ultimate success. Beautiful. Now, before we hang up the mic, is there anything else you want your audience to know about you? I give a damn. Oh, and wow. You really don't hold back on those ones, do you? <laughs> no, that, that's my, my biggest thing. I actually give a damn. I give a damn about each one of my clients. And it's important for me to establish that relationship. So when clients come to me, they become friends. Like I know, I want to know your business. I want to know your frustrations. I want to know like the ins and outs. I want to know your family structure, how much time you have to put into your business, why you started your business. I give a damn. You're not just a number. You're not just a paycheck. You're not just a invoice or transaction. I give a damn. (laughs) Man, that's incredible. I, that's, you know what? Mic drop. We're done. I can't end the episode any better. So that's Ariel Renault. <laughs> so if you want to reach out and find out more about Ariel or Trep Tech or kind of follow this journey a little more closely, Ariel, where can people reach you the easiest? My website, arielrenault.com. A-I-R-I-A-L-R-E-N-A-L.com. Simple. I love it. All right. And with that, this has been another episode. Well, I guess not another. It's been the first, but you know, another. I, you know, although I was, we've... Wondering, I was wondering about that when you first started. You were like, welcome to another episode. I'm like, no. No, it's technically <laughs> the, the the inaugural. But to me, we we have like, what, 30 of these in the can in my mind. Like we've done this before. So it's just natural <laughs> to step back in and come out with episode two lingo. <laughs> right, but whatever, right. you know, people make mistakes. I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so, you know, this has been the first episode of the new iteration of Trep Tech Podcast, and you can catch us back here on another episode two weeks from now. So Ariel, thank you so much for your time and thank you for for talking to to me and, and our audience about who you are, who you help and what you help with and just being an all around awesome person. 
you're up next. <laughs> awesome. <Jesus. laughs>